Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Hey guys, this is your first time listening to the Win With Dice podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about tabletop, RPG, tabletop RPGs. Uh, <laughs> Calvin and I like to uh, talk about the games we uh, play in, the games we run, all the cool GMs out there that we get to interact with, and all the cool stuff in the, the verse, I guess, the tabletop RPG universe. <laughs> uh, we like to uh, take a casual approach to the hobby, so you know we just like to talk about our experiences and demystify the whole thing and maybe you guys can become the gms of your table indeed so this week we're again taking a look at a few more classes from the grand saga tabletop rpg alpha playtest 1.0 uh name pending etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> uh again we want to just talk about this game a bit more and talk about some of the mechanics of it a bit more uh and maybe lay the ground like lay the groundwork for some people being able to like give it a try themselves uh of course if you have any questions or comments about anything we talk about there's a link below to the document itself and a link there to our website where you can leave some comments about it uh but before we get into all that we have to get to the most important part of the show the win with dice weekly gm tip of the week yes the win with dice weekly gm tip of the week brought to you by calvin thanks calvin all right. So this was something I, I, I'm sure we've talked about before, uh, but I just wanted to put it out there that as a game master, you should feel free to retcon something if you feel it will lead to better enjoyment of the game. Uh, but just be sure to, you know, discuss it with your players just to make sure everybody's on the same page and no one feels like cheated or anything. Um, it's, it's largely a communication thing, I think, retcons are. Um, I mean, for me, I kind of just like, I write myself into, if, if I find I wrote myself into a hole, I'll just keep digging and see what I end up with. Um, but there are going to be times where like, it would be better to alter things in some ways, uh, because maybe you gave out like an item that's not as useful as you meant it to be, or is too powerful and it's just throwing off the balance of everything. Or you just find that you're not liking the direction the story is going in. Because again, you as the GM, you're still a player, you're still a person at the table, and you still have say over what happens. As much as the game is, as much as it feels like herding cats, uh, you do have the ability to put your, make your own input on what's happening at the table. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, retconning should be another tool uh, in the GM's tool belt or toolkit that you can deploy when it's necessary. Definitely not something you kind of want to keep changing your story or whatever, keep retconning your story, but uh, when it's like pivotal to not derail things, uh, then just use it. Feel free, don't feel don't feel bad about it. It's, it's all part of the fun, man. Exactly. Now this week, we're gonna talk about three more classes from the Grand Saga Tabletop RPG, and I just want to get right into it because I am very excited for this first one here because I really want to talk about the biker. Yes, uh, apparently everyone's favorite class. Uh, every time I run a, usually every time I run a play session, somebody chooses the biker. Um, the last one, no one chose a biker, but definitely was uh, the one that everyone discussed the most about. So uh, yeah, it's, let's get into it. So uh, you are a speed demon. Uh, you live for going fast and hitting hard. You have a nearly and, and you have a nearly indestructible custom ride. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> so the biker's core ability is called bike. You have a cool motorcycle. Uh, whatever, whichever, you know, uh, brand you want, you got it, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you get a custom, uh, you gain a custom size one bike that you can ride. Uh, your bike cannot be targeted separately or destroyed and while not mounted is ignored by all combatants uh ignored by all combatants and then while you're riding it you double your movement when you when you use this uh, dash or sprint action um you cannot move in a diagonal direction because you're moving way too fast uh <laughs> you cannot leap or fly uh or from any other abilities other than the ones that are given from the biker saga because you know your bike has to be the one doing it um and you cannot benefit from any equipment that modifies any movement so the idea is that even if you put on like sprinting shoes they're not gonna make you make make your bike move faster <laughs> that is technically uh, but, true 
Uh, yeah, technically. So uh, another uh, ability you get for the core, it's another it's another gauge. Um, so it's a this, this gauge is called speed because obviously you have a need for speed. Uh, you gain one speed when you move four spaces in a straight line, and when you and you can spend speed while riding your bike to increase your movement by one, and then your melee attacks automatically do uh, one knockback to it when when you hit with a melee attack. So it's kind of like the you, you build up your momentum and you just kind of like smack somebody really hard. Yeah. So this is all about movement and placement and going fast and hitting hard. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Let's get into the aspects. So to accomplish that, uh, you have there's two aspects uh, that kind of help you out here. Uh, they have like the subtext bikes, so you have to be on your bike to use them. Uh, first one's called joust. Uh, you could interrupt a dash or a sprint action to make a melee attack and then continue your movement. So kind of like you're jousting like a knight. So you uh, pull up, attack, and then you can use the rest of the unused movement uh, to keep moving. So in Ground Saga, as soon as you stop moving from any movement based ability you can't move anymore you just all those extra potential movement is just wasted or not used i should say and then there's drive by which means you can interrupt a dash or a sprint with a, a ranged attack and then continue moving afterwards so the way that you can you know utilize all this speed and um, not let it go to waste so next ability is drift so when you choose to move you can choose to move one diagonal space for every three spaces you move in in a straight movement so now you can like adjust a little bit and you're you're able to like drift around kind of like i guess tokyo like <laughs> yeah <laughs> motorcycle drift I'm sure, that's a, I'm sure that's a thing somewhere <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so you're like motocrossing it uh but the idea is to help your movement so this movement also doesn't break the continuous straight line um for gaining speed so you still have to gain the speed like this for your your gauge um your speed gauge um, so with with drift, you don't able to lose momentum on that. So um, that then, still counts to your gauge. Yeah. So 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 instance, if you move three spaces straight and then one space diagonally with a drift, that still counts as four spaces for gaining speed for your speed gauge. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have an attack here called overrun. Uh, so it's a special agility physical melee attack. Um, requires you to be on your bike and uh, you spend uh, one speed to do this ability so you have to be able to generate some speed to do it but you do a light damage um, and uh, you knock the target prone uh, but on miss or a hit you're still able to move four spaces and if the target is larger than you you can kind of leap you can leap four instead as in like you're like literally like riding driving off your, of them. You're riding off of them yeah that's exactly like that um, you like running people over <laughs> with your bike or leaping off of them if they're bigger than you, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Next we have here is turbocharge. So uh, your dash and sprint requires one less action to use. So dash is actually a zero while you're on your bike. Uh, dash is a zero action move. So you can, yeah, it's just you're just your bike is supercharged. You're so fast you can just do dash really quickly. Right. So you still can't uh, repeat it, but it doesn't take like an action to do. Yeah, it doesn't take an action to 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 do so, um, which is great. Actually, this one was wilder before. Before you, uh, this was like your movement is tripled instead of doubled. But then, I think that got out of hand, <laughs> 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 where like one person was moving like twenty spaces in, it, like in a round, and I was like, no, oh, that's a little too fast. <laughs> I kind of retool this. Um, but yeah, turbocharge is pretty cool. Um, the next one is Jink, which is a reaction uh, where you spend a speed and uh, when you are targeted while riding, I'm uh, sorry, it's a reaction. So when you're targeted while riding your bike, uh, you just make a flat check. And then on a pass, uh, the whatever attacks is targeting just automatically misses and you get to move one space. Kind of you're just, you know, um, you spend like a little bit of your momentum to... Uh, to dodge like ra dodge or you use your evasive maneuvers <laughs> to dodge out the way at like the last second um next ability upgrade onto your bike off road uh while you're riding your bike you can ignore difficult terrain uh because your bike is now you're doing motocross now it's like a it's a mountain bike and uh now you can like uh climb with your bikes so your bike i don't know how whatever flavor either your bike's super fast or you got like spike treads or something you could just climb like a wall because <laughs> they're so yeah. cool like again you yeah. like as the player you have the room to decide how to describe it but mechanically you're climbing yeah. them walls 
Yeah, yeah. Other than that, you can't climb walls unless there's like a ramp or something to get to higher elevation, or if you use overrun to leap up there, uh, which I think would be pretty cool if you did that. <laughs> uh, you still have to also make the burn burn noises every time you do anything, like burn burn. Like, if, <laughs> yeah, if you I mean, don't, like you I should already be doing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, this one's cool. So extra seat. So while you're uh, while you're moving, so while you're moving while riding your bike, uh, an adjacent ally uh, combatant can mount your bike as a reaction as you like you're driving past them. So they can spend their reaction to just jump onto your bike, and then they can choose to dismount at any point of your movement, um, and they're automatically dismounted at the end of your uh, at the end of your movement. So as soon as you finish that movement action. They can just hop off um so that's really cool because you're going to be zipping around anyway on the battlefield it's another way for uh players to interact with each other and get that synergy i wanted to try and fit in a lot of uh player like uh, party synergy kind of actions or abilities or stuff like that so yeah i mean we yeah. talked about the bastion last week and you know you need to get your shields guy in front of someone else just hop on the bike yeah right and it's like really cool to be able to like use your speed to transport a slower character for instance someone in heavier armor so you know they can they can benefit from your speed and and you can benefit from their bulkiness or something like that uh next one is dust cloud so when you spend speed in a round uh you get to just gain cover from on the next attack that targets you because you're so fast you just kick with all this dust <laughs> around you so it's hard for you to target um, next one is gear shift, uh, which is a basic physical technique, which is uh, you gain quickened, uh, which is a busted condition uh, where you get an extra action, extra reaction, and you go first. Um, you have to go first. Um, and as well as you gain the speed. So you're just like, you know, you hit the NOS <laughs> and you're like, I'm supercharged, baby. <laughs> uh, the next one is wheel sweep. So this one is an agility special physical burst one melee attack. So burst affects everything uh, that's like a within one tile of you or one square of you. Uh, requires you riding your bike, requires you to spend a speed. Um, you do light damage and the targets are prone. Uh, that affected targets on hit are prone because you gotta do like a, a, a wheel sweep and you just kind of knock everybody prone and then you get to move two afterwards. Oh, that could be really fun in a crowd. You oh yeah. set it's... them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be really... it's good. And then you just get to move two afterwards because everything's all about fast movement. And the last one is quick mount. So uh, you're able to automatically mount your bike uh, by moving adjacent to it. So the mount action is a ac separate action that you have to take when you want to mount something. You want to ride something. Uh, you have to, like, including your bike, you have to spend an action to actually get back onto it. And, and while you're riding your bike, you're subjected to all of the things that means when you're riding. So if you get knocked back, you actually get knocked off your bike. Um, that kind of stuff or if you get prone you actually get knocked off your bike so it's kind of like the way to balance the, all this extra speed that you're getting is that it only happens when you're on your bike so you're still susceptible to stuff that yanks you off of it well i guess i guess if you're a bastion and chooses <laughs> to get like the uh bulwark then you can't be moved that means you're kind of immune to knock back and stuff like that so that's a way to like synergize that really good yeah but, you can uh, just be on your bike with a shield like captain america yeah, yeah, this is basically Captain America. Uh, uh, half these characters are Captain America, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the biker. It's it's. Uh, I think it's cool because I find that games don't let you just have like ride stuff. <laughs> like for some reason, they're like really hesitant to make you ride stuff or have you have like a mount or like a vehicle or something. They're like, no, you don't get to have it. But or like if you do, it just feels very separate from the normal mechanics of the game. I think the word's janky. Uh, <laughs> it feels very janky and not uh, fully uh, like a incorporated into it, I guess. Um, pr probably some balancing thing where it's like the action economy will get messed up if your mount can actually do anything other than just like, you know, be a really weak thing. But I don't know. It's, I think it's just kind of up to the gym <laughs> what to do. But yeah, but in Grand Saga, it's like here, you get to be a cool motorcycle person wear a cool leather jacket do the akira slide like whatever you want man like <laughs> <laughs> oh that should be <laughs> one of the moves um i don't even know what area it would take up it would, actually it would probably be the same as wheel sleep anyway so <laughs> yeah it would just it would just be wheel sleep <laughs> <laughs> 
which is dope. Uh, probably when the artwork gets done for this class, I'll probably just have the artwork be the Akira slide. <laughs> be like, do the Akira slide, but not make it Akira. Just make it somebody else. But possibly the bike might be still red. I don't know. I have figured it out. All right, let's move on <laughs> before we get uh, copyright or something. Some 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 corporate out there would be like, hey. <laughs> You probably owe us money. <laughs> <laughs> Corpos do be carpin. All right, well, yeah. let's talk about the next class. Yes, this one is the Black Magician. Uh, kind of like the Yu-Gi-Oh card now that I realize it. That's a Dark Magician. Uh, <laughs> but this is the... Uh, so you are the master of incantation, spells, and magic. You shape raw magic into a refined, destructive force. So, yeah, if, you're, if you want to play a wizard, uh, this is your wizard class. Definitely for sure. Uh, so the core as uh, the core ability that you get is Black Magic, which is a spirit basic magic range six attack that deals light damage, and you get to choose an extra, uh, I guess, a status to affect it. So you have Flare, which is burning, Bolt, which is kind of like electricity, does dazed, and Ice, which does uh, slowed, which is pretty good. Ooh, so you can just change up how, like, the status you put on someone with your light damage. Yeah. Yeah, your black magic, the black magic uh, action or attack is is flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I said, the class has a lot of incantations and deals with a lot of magical stuff. So what is an incantation? So incantation is like an arts where it's a, an effect that you can modify an attack with. So incantations affect magic based attacks while Art, arts affects kind of physical, more line melee attacks kind of deal. So um, that's kind of the two lines. They're like the same thing. They do the same thing, but for different uh, types of attacks. Yeah, similar to, um, I guess as a reference, so people know, like similar to meta magic a bit in Pathfinder, where you yes, can alter yes. like the distance of a spell or whatever. Yeah, definitely uh, drawing from that kind of inspiration is the meta magic, sh meta, meta magic stuff uh, from like Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons from before. I don't know if they have meta magic still in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, they have uh, something. I'm not sure what it is though. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'll move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the first one here, uh, like I said uh, last week about the Giga Drill Breaker, uh, here's Giga. <laughs> <laughs> So Giga is an incantation. It changes a basic magic attack into a super, uh, super area magic attack. Uh, sorry, it's a super magic attack. So it increases the attack level twice. So it uses three actions. Uh, you spend one spirit. So um, you have to put a little bit of more effort into it. Uh, but you change any list, any listed light damage to heavy damage. So the attack just gets really crazy. And you also increase your critical hit chance of that attack by one. So it's a uh, it's it's a giga attack. So I like the idea of like you would say I'm gonna use a giga black magic flare if you want to use a if you're using the giga incantation on black magic. So that's kind of like the way I would structure that sentence to my GM. And my GM would be like, "Damn, that sounds pretty strong." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely drawing from like Final Fantasy in this one. Uh, they're you know they're Thunder Raga and like Thunder. Ra and they're kind of like three stages of like their magic system. Yeah. Uh, for sure. And you're also spending uh, spirits or you're kind of like you're spending HP in a bit in, in a way. Yeah, it's like it's it's you're you're less you're lowering the actual your your uh ability to hit. So, um because all of these all of magic attacks usually rely on spirit, you're you're lowering your chances to hit by trying to use like trying to get a bigger outcome of your hit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you gotta uh, be definitely. sure when you use this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or you have a way to recover uh, your spirit. So we'll see. I don't know. I think Giga is pretty cool. Uh, let's see if it's too strong. But I don't know. <laughs> There's some. I think the the Black Mage was probably like the fifth class I made, or the Black Magician. And I had a lot of fun being like, what does Magic Man want to do? <laughs> right? What are the cool ways you can manipulate? Uh, spells. So another one I think I mentioned before is Lance. Uh, so Lance uh, increases the. So you can only increase um, Lance. Lance only affects basic magic attacks. You only can, uh, I guess, apply the Lance incantation to a basic magic attack. It turns a basic magic attack to a special magic attack, um, and the attack becomes 
beam one. So uh, when we brought up beams, beams are the attack uh, area effect that hits the that goes like whatever the beam number is. That that space is wide, a straight line throughout the whole battlefield. So it just kind of like this is really epic. I guess beam like in Dragon Ball Z, you just shoot it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you would say I'm gonna use a black magic bolt lance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you get to scream out Bolt Lance a whole bunch, which is pretty cool. Or Ice Lance, which is also cool. I think we talked about before, like, applying that to the spell shot from the archer. Yeah, like how uh, spell, spell Arrow allows you to use magic incantations on your bow shot action, which means you can immediately, like, use Lance, which means, like, your bow shot is the entire length of the battlefield as long as you can line up the shot because it only goes in one direction. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, the next one is Turbo, uh, which is uh, you can, it increases the attack level by one. Uh, you could go all the way up to super. Uh, you can spend X Spirit to increase your critical hit chance by X. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> if you want to really try and crit, this is how you do it. <laughs> this class is definitely for like the risk takers because you're it's like yeah. that's two things that are spending spirit you're gonna make yourself like if you don't succeed in that turn you're gonna be worse off for every turn after yeah definitely if you don't have a way to recover or someone's gonna hit you with a uh, a spirit dc save then it's like you're you're nuts so um although there's still a little overlap between uh turbo and giga but it just has like a wider range so you can change a special magic attack into a super magic attack so for instance you can't have a giga lance but you could have a turbo lance flare so sorry you can have a turbo black magic flare lance but you can't have a giga black magic flare lance because of the limitations on the uh i guess the attack level change right yeah so that's kind of how that works <laughs> If, if people are wondering <laughs> because some part of me I was like wait a minute did I just make like immediately broke my game on like the fifth character fifth class I ever made <laughs> so that had to change um, next couple abilities so counter spell uh, you ignore uh, any on miss effects for magic uh, saves or effects that deal magic damage so uh, you just you're just so good at being wizards that you say uh, even on your on miss effects I don't care so all your reliable magic damage you don't care all of the on miss effects you don't care um, next one is just straight up wizard you are a wizard so once per round you get an accuracy on a magic attack or and tech and or technique yeah you're just better than everybody else just at magic. At wizarding <laughs> yeah, probably gonna just, need that art. if you're spending all your spirit exactly <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely this class is more about the big bombastic like one shot spells you're just like I am the master of magic like all the magic glyphs show up and you just launch your attack uh, spell focus uh, which is when you spend focus on a magic attack you can have it cost uh, one less action instead of gaining plus one accuracy and uh, this does not change the attack profile so the, the attack so let's say if you use uh, you you use spell you spell fo you spend focus on a giga flare lance which requires three actions because it's a super attack. It actually requires two actions instead, um, but you don't gain the uh, extra accuracy from the focus ability or the focus action, I should say. So yeah, you're able to just spend focus to do more and less actions. I guess that's kind of like a quality of life um, ability. Like, uh, if, if you want to start doing more things in your turn, instead of yeah. worrying if your things are actually going to work. Well, if you have ability, like, say, um, this kind of ties back to the archer, right? So the archer has the ability to just gain focus when you defeat a foe. So you gain focus as a reaction, then you can spend that focus on another attack that turn, but it costs a less, uh, one less action. So you actually can do, like, if you have a way to gain focus for free, which... Uh, once we get through the other classes there's like you can give an ally focus abilities exist so there therefore you can you know use that to make your actions like just kind of like work the action action economy a little bit better so there's more inter-team synergy um next incantation is called buster you get your buster attack 
Um, again, I think the the incantation and arts uh, classes are like classes. The abilities really came from this class. I had a lot of fun finding all the ways to make the names. So uh, this one's called Buster. Uh, increase the attack level by one. You can use you can change a basic or special attack uh, to a super attack. Um, the attack gains shred based on the amount of damage that you're doing. So if you're doing light damage, it does one. If you're doing heavy damage, it does two. If it does super damage, it does three based on the attack. So um, it's a good way of getting through a really heavily warded foe. Uh, so you can get through their defenses pretty good. So it would just be like a a <laughs> Buster Black Magic Ice or Ice Black Magic Ice Buster. Yeah, that sounds cooler. <laughs> 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 I really hope when people actually play this game because I'm not there, but I hope your GM, hope everyone gets a blast calling out these attack names because uh, that's half the fun of the game. Uh, next one is another incantation called Salvo. So this one's kind of uh, cool. So it it only can change a basic attack to a special attack. Uh, that's the limitation. Um, but you can combine uh, you can you can combine this like whatever the attack that you're um, doing with another basic magic attack and apply both effects, uh, but it still counts as one attack. So you're able to like uh, cast two magic actions in the same go. So I guess if you did, for, if we're bringing back the archer uh, or like maybe even the, I think it would only be the archer. It's the only one we really cover that has magic abilities. But uh, ironically. So the archer, <laughs> ironically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Arcanists have all their attacks are special, um, so it wouldn't work, but because you can use spell arrow to make your bow shot, you can use incantations on that. You could actually like use bow shot and like black magic. So you could do like a, let's uh, sorry, let me get this together. Uh, so you could do a black magic flare bow shot salvo <laughs> attack, which would be uh, a special attack. Cause I mean, obviously uh, it sounds cool as fuck. So as a special attack, you would do light, physical damage, light magical damage, uh, and the target would be burning on hit. And if you spend aim on that attack, you can uh, use um, any of the aim abilities. And I guess on top of that, if you had a uh, uh, wizard, it counts as a magic attack, so you get, you get an accuracy on it. Therefore, when you use spell action, it actually costs minus one action to use. So it's back down to only being one action. And that's kind of the uh the fun part about character building in the game where you can just make that be very viable uh, with only a few i think it's only like four aspects which you could probably do by level two yeah yeah like i i, I like again like each class can be a focused thing on its own and it exemplifies that spirit of that type of character but it's really in the combos where i think the system shines yeah, yeah. The next one is called Chain. So uh, you, it's, it's, it increases the attack level by one. Uh, you have to spend a spirit, but on on hit. Uh, so on hit, you spend a spirit, and you basically just repeat that attack, targeting another foe uh, f from, like... So the attack launches from the first target, so it's kind of like you, it's extending, it's chaining. I don't know if I explained that properly, but uh, so on hit, you repeat an attack to another target being affected that not being affected by this ability. It requires a new attack roll each time it's repeated, and this new attack comes originates from the previous target. So you can you can spend all your spirit if you wanted to launch an attack across the battlefield as long as all of the enemies kind of lined up. So yeah. So cool. when you say originates, does the range of the attack depend on like the person is the enemy it's originating from? Yeah, so if you have a, so let's say if you use uh, black magic, right? Black magic flare. Uh, the first enemy that you attack is within six. The next enemy you attack with that has like a chain, like when you're using chain, has to be within six of that first enemy you attack. And then subsequently after that, the second, like the, if you want to target a third person, they have to be within six spaces of the second person right. as it cops around the battlefield and attacks. Okay. Um, which which now I'm thinking is kind of wild because you have some abilities that uh, say like pull them next to you <laughs> so I guess you can if you do hit every person on the battlefield you can like gank like half of the opponents if you spend all your spirit uh, definitely like uh, this the black black magician has a bunch of stuff where you're able to 
you know, you could burn your whole MP bar essentially to do something wild. You can bar somebody if you wanted to, but yeah. But then you got to focus on getting your spirit back, or just not yeah, using magic for the rest of the you're, combat. Exactly right. You're like a one and done. Like if this is the only gimmick, like this is what you got. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the GM can definitely work around it by just spacing everybody out, or just you know spacing you out, kind of deal. Yeah. You're like uh, a glass cannon, but your cannon is made of glass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good way of, of saying it. Uh, the, the all of the uh, all of the um, aspects are incantations, pretty mo most of them. So uh, the next one is Nova, uh, which is a basic magic attack that uh, goes from a basic. Sorry, it's a basic magic goes basic magic to special magic attack for the incantation. Um, it's a it changes the attack to burst one. It does a knockback, so you're able to just kind of like you just blast out in like this radius. Um, then there's Grand Sorcery, which is a stance, so you gain Immobilize, so you can't move, but you gain X bonus damage on attacks, where X is equal to the number of actions required for that attack. So if you put, if you do Grand Sorcery while using a Giga Black, Giga Black Magic Flare, uh, because it's uh, three action, because it's a super action, uh, you actually gain three bonus damage on that attack, so you can really annihilate somebody, but you suffer the, the you can't move, so you better not have to move <laughs> yeah kind of i like those moments where it's like oh i see how i would use this especially with this class because it's like everything pretty much increases the number of actions your attack uses so i like reading i like those moments of like oh i see how that would be useful with this and this maybe that's the character i want to make um you know after i make my archer yeah after your character um definitely a multi-class into black mage because you have the spell arrow so you can do cool things like that um, then there's Saber, which is uh, it inc any, another incantation. Uh, it increases the attack level by one, up to super. And uh, this changes the attacks to become a slash one melee attack, and it does an extra shred. So you can, it you, you solidify the magic into like a blade or a weapon, and you just whack them with it. And uh, last incantation is Explosive. So this one uh, changes the attack level by one up to super, and it becomes blast one. So this is, you could ha this is where you get your uh, blast attack, where it's like you know you launch your uh, black magic bolt, ex or explosive black magic bolt, or explosive black magic flare, kind of deal. Yeah, I think you you put it in an area. Yeah, so that boom kind of deal. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 so what I, what I really like about this one is just like how much stuff is like spending spirit, but you do something really amazing. Because again, that's yeah. going to make it harder for you to do spirit rolls in the future. So if someone targets you with magic, you try to do magic, you're going to have a problem. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like kind of, again, I do like to play with the risk reward factor of it, where it's like, you know, you can end this person's life, but if you miss, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> yeah, because they know who to deal with first now. Yeah, exactly, right? And it's like, um, it's so fun uh, to, I, I like playing wizards and stuff in games, and I, I often like, I, I, I just want like the freedom to, to like alter magical effects. I want to feel like I have choices other than like what spells to take, but like I can just whatever, whatever. It feels more like you're uh, honing, honing like a specific spell to its fullest potential because you have all these ways to manipulate it than like you just getting extra spells. Right. I think. Yeah. I like, I like the idea of, of, of that being like the, the way to make a spell caster, I guess. Okay, let's get into the last class for today, the Bruiser. Yes, the Bruiser. The Bruiser. Your punches carry tremendous weight behind them. You string together blows while weaving through your foes attack weaving through your foes attacks to land a finishing blow that sends your foes hurtling. There's a lot of foes in that sentence. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the idea of the Bruiser, uh, you are the boxer kind of character. So he has a core ability called Right Hook. Um, this one is a might basic physical melee attack combo, which I don't think we've spoken about combos before in this game. We have not. So combos are abilities that have like an extra tag and, uh, based on, they have to be done kind of in sequence. So there's an opener, there's an extender, and there's a finisher. So you can use a combo. You don't have to use them all in the same turn, but the previous turn you had to use another one in the sequence so if your first turn you use an opener the second turn you can use an extender 
and then the third turn you can use a finisher if you wanted to or you can do it all in this as long as you've used like that, the action any, any, yeah the action any action that has opener text on it or finisher text on it and also some actions have depending on when you use it can count as an opener and have a different text as well as a finisher everything so it's kind of like a move within a move depending on when you use it in your uh your your uh turns i guess so right hook um it has opener text where it just does light damage so it's like a regular attack but if it's used as a finisher its finisher text says uh, you do light damage and you do X knockback where X is the number of successful melee attacks used in your turn. So you could like pummel somebody and then finish them off with a right hook. Send them like reeling. Yeah. Cool. The bruisers, the bruisers whole thing is like you're building up a lot of stuff to kind of like, like, like the flavor text says to just kind of land that final hit and just like send them like flying. It's all about knockback. It's all about combo. It's all about like, you know, doing that kind of thing. Okay, and I see in their aspects, the first one is the left hook to follow up or extend from that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this class was actually pretty easy to flow to put together. So uh, left hook, uh, so it's an opener. It does light damage, but if it's used as an extender, uh, your next finisher attack combo gains X knockback where X is the number of successful uh, combo actions used this turn. So if you if you slug somebody with a left hook, it means that your right hook uh, just sends them flying even further. Um, Is there a limit I'll, on I, number of extenders you can add? Yes. So you can only use one extender uh, per currently. combo. Yeah. Per combo. Yes. That needs that that needs to be kind of play tested to see if like maybe extenders can be added in. But right now it's kind of like you choose you use your opener, your extender, or your finisher. But um, you can always kind of use the, you can always open up, uh, start a new combo in the middle of our, our already existing combo. So, uh, for instance, like if you use an opener after using an extender, you just restart the combo, which means that you're just not use you just can't use a finisher afterwards. That's just the only thing. So, um, jab. Uh, is one where it's uh, sorry, it's it's an agility. So th sorry, left hook was might uh, jab is an agility basic uh, melee attack combo. So um, the opener does reliable damage, um, but the extender is that it does reliable damage and it costs minus one action to use. So it's like a quick jab. It's fast. Right. So uh, like I'm noticing with these so far, like the openers tend to be pretty basic things, but you have to decide what you want to start with because you have to know what extended abilities or finishing abilities you want to use from the other moves. Yes, and you can use any opener, extender, or finisher from any of the classes or aspects that you have access to. So yeah. for instance, if you chose a couple from uh, Bruiser, you choose a couple from Martial Arts, you choose a couple from Gunslinger, which we'll get into later, uh, they all have uh, combo abilities that you can mix and match and choose whichever one works for you. Okay, so the next one is Haymaker. Uh, this one's a, re a reaction, physical melee attack combo. So when you're targeted uh, with a melee attack, uh, you gain vulnerable, but the, uh, but the, uh, sorry, you make the melee attack and if you're successful, it does a heavy damage to your opponent. So it's like you're you're like dropping your guard to land the haymaker because you're like you you brought them in and you're you're trying to finish them off with like a with a sudden punch. Right. Kind of like literally throwing a haymaker. I had to like learn a bunch of boxing terms. To figure <laughs> this out. I was like, what's a haymaker? And it's just like, yeah, you just you just throw a punch when your guard's down <laughs> to catch them off guard. Uh, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, and it's just like specifically a finisher, so it's of course you have to t you have to line that up to be the big finishing move. Yeah, yeah. Most finishers tend to be like it does heavy damage or it does like a lot of nonsense for the uh, action economy. They do like heavier damage. They do more damage per action that you actually use or has like more abilities that kind of thing. They're just kind of like better, uh, better designed actions or, or better actions for the uh, price of. Uh, the action used, I guess. Yeah, you just have to like plan out your actions two actions ahead. Yeah, essentially, um, or kind of be op op uh, opportunistic if you have a bunch of other ones. Uh, the idea is flexibility, uh, but like still uh, being kind of plan planning ahead a little bit. The next one is duck and weave. 
Uh, so if you su successfully pass a melee attack save, you can just move to any adjacent space to the attacker. Or sorry, of the attacker. So uh, let's say if something's like a size 2 or size 3, you can move to any space around their like, I don't know, I think size 2 is like a 2x2 a two two character. Mm -hmm. There's four spaces, so you can move pretty far. Um, but also you can like move behind somebody and then set up like a flank or something with other other um, players, that kind of stuff. Uh, a good way to like kind of move around the battlefield with like a, if you're being mobbed, you can just move adjacent to a bunch of foes when they miss you because you're so cool. Uh, next one is uh, wind up. So when you spend focus on a melee attack, you deal X knockback where X is the number of actions used on that attack. So kind of like you're again, if you, if you focus up on attack and you just, you know, uh, you smash someone, send them flying. Um, headbutt is an opener. Um, it's a very, it's a might basic physical attack opener. Uh, it does reliable damage, so you just throw a headbutt out if you wanted to. Knockout blow. Uh, if this attack would bring an enemy target, sorry, if, if, if an attack would bring a target's HP enough to be staggered, uh, they gain stun. So staggered is a condition that you get if your HP bar becomes half or lower. So it's it doesn't affect you specifically, but a lot of other abilities in the game references whether or not you're staggered. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's so, like partially in some ways a descriptive thing, but there's other stuff that will lock onto that. Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, and, and I I didn't want to say like I don't want to repeat myself a whole bunch saying if a target's at half HP. And now it's like if you're at ha half HP, it counts as you are staggered. Oh, okay, uh, I see. Idea. So you had other abilities yeah. that were like half HP related, so you just made it a term, so that's easier yeah. to describe and use. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so you know when when you do when you do bring somebody to half HP, they gain stunned, which stunned is a pretty nasty condition. It's like you lose attacks, uh, you lose gauge, you lose all of your defensive stuff, everything, anything that you built up during the thing, you just you're just like flat oh, out because you gauge. Know, Oof. Yeah, <laughs> don't get. S there's not a lot of things that just stun you outright. Um, compared to, I guess, like not a lot. I mean, there's a lot, but as compared to everything else, it's like a small percentage. But yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, so next one is on the ropes. Uh, so when your foe falls prone from a knockback because you have so much knockback, uh, you deal. So f from any of your effects, uh, you deal. Uh, X bonus damage where X is the amount of not back dealt. So if you send oh. them flying four, you can, and they land, they smash up against like a wall or something, they actually take four damage, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 This this class is just going to be like a whirlwind of knocking people away. Oh, I mean, wait till we get to whirlwind. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> 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 I should have read uh, ahead. Yes, Calvin. Yeah. <laughs> now you're thinking. <laughs> uh, so the other two. We have Underdog and Guts. Uh, this is based on the amount of uh, wounds you have and statuses you have. So, like, Underdog says that you deal X bonus damage on melee attacks where X is the number of wounds you have. So, you know, the more damaged you are, the more damage you'll do. <laughs> and Guts, uh, which is you deal bonus damage based on the number of statuses that you have on. So, you know, even though you're getting beaten down on, you're still, you got the Guts, and you're the Underdog. <laughs> so yeah. You can just make a comeback. Uh, and then, like Calvin uh, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Whirlwind, uh, it's an arts, so it affects uh, melee attacks. Uh, it increases their attack stage by one up to super, and you use a, uh, you use, it changes the ability from uh, spirit and agility to might, and you use might instead, but it adds three knockback onto any attack. So, I mean, yeah, you can start like uh, doing a lot of uh, nutty stuff with like uh, on the ropes or like just sending someone flying very very far <laughs> so the last ability is uh cross counter which is a reaction physical technique um when you when an adjacent foe uses a reaction uh, as an extender you could just deal light damage to them before resolving that reaction so if, if they try to react to what you're doing you react to their doing and it's like two levels of reactions and you just like you get a you get a quick blow in before they get to do whatever they're trying to react to, which is uh, pretty cool. But you have to set that up with the opener first. I uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's like the idea would be like if they have a reaction that says they negate damage or they say like they get to ignore your attack. Well, jokes they get to take light damage for trying to ignore my attack because yeah. your 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 fists are moving <laughs> take so it back fast. Take back over here. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, which would be pretty cool. And then next turn you come back around with a finisher. Yeah, next turn then you give him the give him the the right hook or something. <laughs> give him the razzle dazzle. <laughs> yeah, give him the razzle dazzle. Yeah, this I like that this is like a super boxer. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels pretty fun. I think I'm gonna have to take a look at the uh, some of the uh, combos here, but um, yeah, for the most part, it, it feels it feels really cool. It feels like you're throwing out those punches, and each punch just leads into that big big final blow. Yeah, I like the like the strategizing of. I know I want to do this finisher or something like that, or I want to set myself up in this way, so I have to think multiple moves ahead or multiple actions ahead because this could be split over multiple turns. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, even it could even be, uh, again, like using um, combos from other, uh, at, from other uh, classes. Yeah. As well. Cool. Cool, cool. Anything else you want to say about the Bruiser or actually any of these three classes before we move on? Um, no, I think we're I think we're good actually on this guy. Uh, I'm good on it. I think it's a cool class. Uh, definitely uh, fun to put together. So yeah. Yeah, I like um, again. I, I like how the uh, the genre of this game uh, you can mix together like a literal biker and a black magician. Like one person's doing sappy magic and one person's just on a flipping motorcycle yeah or you could be a motorcycle wizard and you could be the dude on the bike Ooh. and then and and throwing the spells because you know you got drive you drive by and spelling people that's got to be a right? thing in the setting like motorcycle yeah. wizard gang yeah for sure or like you could be on a motorcycle and then you can be a boxer at the same time you just drive up to somebody and give them the give them the right hook man <laughs> Those classes synergize very well because one's focused on not back, like both are focused on kind of dealing not backing, and, and you know the best way to not get hit by the boxer is to literally run away from them. So, but if you're you so going? fast on your bike, <laughs> yeah, where are you going? You're gonna take this fist, <laughs> send him flying, man. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right. Um, again, if you guys want to check out these classes or anything else in the game, the document will be linked below, as well as a link you go to on our website, womanthice.ca, where you can leave any particular comments you might have on the game or anything else. You can drop a comment below here on YouTube or send us an email. Uh, we will see it and reply to it if you have anything that needs clearing up. Because, um, you know, then Ramon will be aware of anything that might need to be updated because Ramon is the mechanics guy. Yeah, I I like the I like the actions and mechanics and the numbers stuff. <laughs> yeah, like if people ask things, then you know like, oh, this is something people are confused about, or this is something they need like an update on, or this is something that I don't know, maybe they need to redo a certain part or something like that. Yeah, for sure. A any questions or concerns or just mistakes? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I will get it fixed. Uh, all right. Uh, additionally, since you're if you're looking at the description below, you'll find some links to some of our uh, gaming streams. You can also check them out if you just go to the channel. Uh, as well, you can see some of the people we've talked to who are uh, some Lancer third-party creators who've made some awesome stuff for the Lancer RPG. Additionally, I want to shout out to the Untold Stories Project, where I'm at, where I am on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, by now, I think like at least a couple episodes of Freedom League Dark will have been out by the time you're hearing this. So I, I have no idea what's going to happen or what direction that game is going to go in. Uh, but also, be sure to check out the Gemstars game where uh, we're playing magical girls in a fantasy world. Um, we very recently did a very interesting skill challenge that was basically us riding in a minecart through oh, a mine. Nice. <laughs> Love that. Oh my gosh, it was really fun um, having to do all sorts of different challenges and get ourselves going in the right direction. There was like a whole maze we could go through, uh, and there was a lot of pits. <laughs> <laughs> we missed very, we missed a whole bunch of them. But also, uh, by the time this comes out, uh, because some of the magical girls have animal companions, and of course, we're doing an animal companion episode. <laughs> So yeah, that'll that'll have been streamed by the time this is out. So that's gonna be a lot of fun to do because we're not even playing our own companions; we're playing different ones. Oh, sick! <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. everybody's learning secrets about everybody else. Uh, so if you want to check that out, just check out the Untold Stories Project on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, but that is it for now. Uh, anything else you want to say before we head off? No, let's 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 get out of here. <laughs> all right. Well, for all of our motorcycle riding GMs and players out there. 
Just remember to keep on winning with dice. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.